Hi everybody, it's John from Envision Robotics. Thanks for tuning into our tutorial today. We're going to be making a hinge and I'm going to work through this rather quickly and uh, you can always pause and follow along as you need to. So um, this is not the type of hinge that you would use for a flexi. It's more of, I'll call it a standard hinge, but it's a good exercise to get familiar with how to create a project that is a little bit more intermediate or uh, even advanced. So first thing I want to do is go into my shape generator and grab uh, from the featured section a soft box. I'm going to go back here and go into my basic shapes, grab a box, and you're going to see in a moment I'm actually going to make a part. And so I'm just going to size this for a moment. The red box here, I want it to be six high. And you'll see I'm going to make this part also six high. And let me just drop this red square in there, size it. Make, I'm just going to center it as well to make sure I line it. Okay, that looks good. It looks like I've got good coverage. I'm going to go over here and group them. Very good. So now I've created my own part for this. And when I make uh, designs, I usually keep a copy um, off to the side so that if I need to make some adjustments, I can quickly do that. I'm going to twist this around, flip this up on 90 degrees. So now I'm going to start making the part that's going to form the hinge section. Just use my triangle here to move it up on the platform so it's nice and flush. Great, that looks good. Okay, now I'm going to bring this one down to uh, a height of 6. And I thought we did that there. 6. There we go. I'm going to resize this one here. Instead of 20, I'm going to make this one 10. Um, yep, I'm going to make that one 10. Okay, now, so I'm going to take this piece here, reduce this one to 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to form three pieces that are almost the same, except this one is going to be the center piece. And I'll leave it yellow for the moment. I tend to like to work in uh, light colors. Then I'm going to hit Control D to duplicate it. And I'm going to just create a copy there. And while I'm doing this, I'll just turn this one to a light color green. There we go. This one here. D as well. Move this one over. And turn this one a light color green. Now, this is going to be the center uh, part of my hinge. These are going to be on either side. I'm just going to reduce the size of this to 2. And I'll reduce the size of this one to 2. Very good. Now, in between uh, these green and yellow pieces, this is where the flex is going to happen. So I want to actually create a tolerance of about 1 millimeter. So um, my grid here is set to 0.5. You can click on this to adjust it to 1. I'll keep it on 0.5 for the moment. And I'm just going to go over 2. So half and half. So now I have a gap in here of 1 millimeter. I like that. That looks good. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and grab a cylinder. So what I have to do is drill a hole essentially through the yellow piece and then eventually I'll actually create a solid peg between the two green pieces and so it'll allow this yellow to flex. So um, you see, I'm just going to move this one over here, easier to see. So I want my hole um, to be 3 millimeters by 3 millimeters. And there we go. And I'm going to keep this one a little bit longer for the moment. And flip this 90 degrees. Very good. I'm going to bring this down. And... I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to align everything here, doing like that. This one's already aligned. It's good shape there. I'm going to 
click on this one and I'm going to create a copy of this one, Control D. Then I'm going to hit my down arrow. And for the moment, I'm just going to turn this one solid and I'll use the color orange. It'll be a little bit easier to see. Click on this. And this is going to be the rod or the peg that is going to um, pass through the yellow, but be secured to the two green pieces. So instead of making it two, I'm going to make it, or sorry, three, I'm going to make it two, which means there's a half millimeter of tolerance all around this. Grab these here. Just also um, make sure they're aligned. Now, what I tend to do is um, I could have aligned them so that this is all flush with the uh, with each other, but I don't want to do that because I want to be able to pull this one out as I need it. And I'm just going to show you just like that. I can just move this around. And it's a little easier if it's um, these, the, the, the hole and the peg are not aligned because it, it's just too difficult to move over there. So what I want to do now is I want to take this yellow one and I know that, again, each movement is 0.5 of a millimeter. So I'm just going to take this yellow one and I'm going to move one, two, three. So I've essentially moved it one and a half millimeters so the distance from the green here to the yellow is one and a half millimeters. I could probably move it one more because I have a lot of room if I want to see how much room I have. Yeah, I've got a fair amount of room, but I did a print earlier and it works fine. So I'm going to keep that gap at one and a half. And you can see that that is now offset. But we're doing pretty well in terms of time as we work through this. Okay, so next thing I want to do is I want to grab the yellow piece and I want to grab the hole. So I'm just going to grab the cylinder that's a hole first and then grab my yellow piece. Come here. Do it the opposite way. There we go. And I will group that. So that will only put a hole through my yellow piece. You can see there's not a hole through my green pieces. Okay, so now I've got this rod. Now let's just review the dimensions again. So this is, each one of these is two. That gap is three. This was three. So I've got, again, two, three, six, nine. So I should be able to make this rod nine and then align everything so that, it's, oh, not like that, my apologies. Uh, let's do this, let's just move it manually. There we go, and I should be able to, there we go, move it like that. That's gonna be a little easier too. Okay, so that's good, so I've got this aligned. And just to show you that we have some nice spacing, I can just go like this and go in really close. You can see that I've got my orange peg here with enough tolerance that the yellow piece will flex nicely. And the printer should be able to handle that without any problem. It's amazing what these 3D printers can do. So, okay, so I'm gonna back up here so you can see that. I'm gonna turn this green again. If I'm, I'm happy with that, Looks good. We're almost done. I'm going to group all of these really quick. Great stuff. If I want to preserve the colors, I click on solids and hit multicolor. And then you can see that I've got my orange peg in here. Very good. Back up a little bit. You can see that. Okay, so now let's actually start attaching a few things here to the hinge so that we have something to actually move. So this is, that's why I also kept this piece, okay? Okay, so let me see, let's, what's the dimension of this here? This is 20, and let's make it 25. <clears throat> okay, now I'm going, I've got a little logo here. I'm gonna just put this on, move it up a little bit here. Let's see, what's that, three? 
So I'm going to drop that in there. And we only want a little bit sticking up there. That should be enough. Okay, now I'm just going to center this logo with the yellow piece. Just like that. That looks good. Happy with that. I'll grab everything here as well. I'll just center this like that. And just to check to see that I've got enough of a connection. Yeah, that's pretty good. I can live with that. And I'll just turn this one back into a solid. I can then take this piece here, Control D, move it, slide it over here. Again, same thing. I want to make sure that I've got a reasonable amount of connection there. Yeah, that's not bad. I can always adjust this a little bit more if I wanted to, but um, just to show you, I can do that. I can go 0.25, like that. It's a little bit more. That should still give me enough um, enough distance there to flex without any issue. I'm going to turn that one into a solid. Back out a little bit. Let's just drag a hole in here and conserve a little bit of filament. This thing's 20. Let's make this 15. This one here, 15. And center these two. Quick, quick, and then good. Just make sure everything's aligned here. Again, that looks pretty good. Take these two, group them. Okay, I'm happy with that. Okay, so essentially all I need to do now, click on group, and there we go. We've got our hinge. This will work actually quite well. And again, it's a very simple hinge, but it's more about the process that you go through to create a hinge. There's different ways of creating a hinge. This is a, I found a pretty quick way to create one that works effectively. Like I said, I'll, I'll uh, eventually do a post on creating a hinge for a flexi, but um, try this one. It works really well, and uh, it's actually not that hard to make, but it's actually a pretty neat project, so you can actually create things that flex and move with uh, not only Tinkercad, but certainly with a, a 3D printer. So, okay, we hope that you've enjoyed uh, this video, and uh, be sure to check out our other videos that we have on YouTube as well.